Staten Island for one united message and one cause. Uh, I will say at the outset um, that the elected officials who are not here, Senator Savino, uh, Camilla Hanks, and David Carr wanted to be here but just couldn't, and they sent representatives. Uh, Courtney Gervais will be, I think, submitting a statement as well as Paul Casal. Uh, let me just say this at the outset. Susan Wagner is a great school. Uh, great teachers, uh, great administrators, great students. It has a tremendous reputation, great alumni network. Uh, and, and Staten Island is a great place to, to live and to raise a family, which is why we are so privileged uh, to represent the people of Staten Island. And, and many of the parents and the students, not just in this school, but across Staten Island. Uh, and something happened here recently outside the school that was horrific. It was a brutal beatdown. And I'm going to let every one of my colleagues speak for themselves, but the one fundamental thing that every parent on Staten Island should feel secure and confident about is to know that their child, when they go to school, is going to be a safe and secure environment so they can learn, they can grow, they can mature, they can make friends, and they can live in a peaceful and learn in a peaceful environment. And too often what's happened is we're told, well, there's nothing we can do in the school because of new policies. And we're told on the outside, there's nothing we can do to the kids or the bad app apples, and they're only a handful, because we're told we can't do anything about it. We need to stop the madness now. If there are no consequences to violent actions, what do we think is gonna happen? So what we want to do today is to tell, especially the parents and the children, not just in this high school, but across Staten Island, that we are committed to working together to make sure that the kids are safe, to make sure the teachers are safe, we have, we have situations where teachers are threatened with violence as they're in the classroom. They're petrified, some of them. Some of the administrators say, well, there's nothing we can do. We're told we can't do anything. Let's stop the madness once and for all. We're very, very pleased to hear the remarks of the new incoming mayor. And I think I could speak for everybody here that we wish him the very best to help turn this city around. And we're so pleased, at least I was personally, to see his selection of chan uh, the, the new chancellor, who seems committed to support the very principles that we espouse here today. That every child should be entitled to a great education, every title child should be safe, and there have to be consequences to actions, particularly violent actions. We support the administrators here on the inside, and the great men and women of the New York City Police Department on the outside. That's my message. I'm pleased to introduce Congresswoman Nicole Malley Thomas. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Borough President elect Vistella and my colleagues for being here today. And this is obviously very troubling for us, for the teachers, for the parents, for the community, and for the students mostly. And we saw this coming, quite frankly with a number of policies that had been put in place by this mayor. And some of us here, I think many of us here, had spoken up against these very policies. Let's start with dismantling school discipline. The mayor decided it was a good idea to no longer punish those students who were disruptive, violent, and affecting other people's education in the classroom. They've significantly reduced uh, suspensions and perhaps troubling for those in law enforcement, they have not reported accurately the schools. Uh, violence has been taking place in the schools. And so when you speak to law enforcement, you bring up these issues, they say they're not keeping track, they're not keeping record. So students can violate once, twice, 10 times, doesn't matter. And 
there's no solid reporting. And that is the one thing that I think that we are collectively asking for the next administration to do. Please reinstate school discipline. Please allow the teachers and the, the principal to have control of their classroom and their schools once again. And please be transparent with the incidents that are occurring in and around our schools. The second thing is the reduction in school safety. You have an administration currently that wants to completely remove our school safety under the umbrella of the NYPD and instead move it to the Department of Education. We have seen significant reductions, in fact, a 25% reduction in our school safety officers around the city of New York. That is also problematic, and we want the new administration to address that. Some of the other things that you have seen, if New York City continues and the state continues to be soft on crime, this generation is looking at what's happening. They're seeing that people who are doing bad things are getting away with it, that they're being released back onto the street, that people with multiple convictions, lengthy rap sheets, are not getting the punishment that they're supposed to be, that they're not paying the price for what they're doing and disrupting the quality of life and increasing the crime rates in our city. So we need to continue the push to get some common sense reforms that are going to put public safety first because it's teaching a bad lesson to young people who feel that, that they can now get away with bad and criminal behavior. So I'm happy to be here to join my colleagues. Um, we also want to make sure that, um, well, I, I should say that on Monday, I've already reached out and we have a meeting scheduled with our NYPD chief, uh, who will be also be joined by the superintendent, with the principal of the school, with the head of school safety, so we can all collectively sit down and have a discussion about how are we gonna move forward and what reforms are necessary, in addition to the ones that I've said, uh, that need to take place in order to restore school safety. So thank you to my colleagues for being here. Thank you for the parents who are here to show concern for their children. And collectively, we're gonna put the pressure necessary to get the changes to restore safety to not only our schools, but across our community and the city of New York. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, and next up is uh, somebody who served not just in the state legislature, but was a former prosecutor himself, Senator Andrew Lanza. Thank you. Um, for President Masella, thank you for bringing us together. Um, it is a privilege always to stand with my colleagues here on Staten Island. And, and, uh, and for President Fasella, I'm glad that uh, you brought together uh, we elected officials in a bipartisan matter. Um, we have our differences uh, with respect to ideology, policies, uh, but I can tell you, having worked with each and every official standing here, uh, we all are on the same page when it comes to this very important issue, which is public safety, especially the safety of our children uh, as they attend school. Um, and so we have different approaches. I may say things, and I'm about to say things that may make some uncomfortable uh, and, and vice versa, but we are united. And again, uh, I thank uh, Vito Fasella for presenting uh, what we have to say here in this way. And Vito said it perfectly, really. Um, this is madness. I, I can think of no better way to describe this. Vito hit it on the head. It is madness. And, and the great danger for us, and I know when Vito called this together, he said it's got to stop. Because the danger for all of us is not just what's happening here in our streets and in our schools, but the danger is that we become numb to the madness, that we accept the madness, uh, that we uh, decide that there's nothing we can do about it, the madness. And we must, and we can. So, as Vito said, I, I was a prosecutor in the Manhattan DA's office. I worked for Robert Morgenthau, the gold standard for prosecutors, Democrat Mike Cusick. Um, 
So this is not happening in a vacuum, as our Congresswoman Melly Takis pointed out. This is not happening in a vacuum. With all due respect to my good friend, the mayor, Mayor de Blasio, his policies, in my belief, in my opinion, have created a climate for crime. And you cannot deny that fact. People see it across the city, Democrat, Republican, of every background, of every race, of every ethnicity, of every creed, see what's happening outside their windows. We see the tragic increase in violent assaults from one end of this city to the other. We saw it right here. My daughter, my oldest child, is a newly minted school teacher. Teaching is a calling. Teaching is one of the most important things that we do in our community. As Vito pointed out, our teachers deserve the best. They deserve to know that when, as they teach our children, that they will be safe. Our children deserve to know that as they come to school, they will be safe. When I got that video, my daughter sent it to me as a teacher from the school, someone sent it to her. As the parent of a child in high school, my bones shook. I cringed. As a parent, as a parent, there's nothing worse. And by the way, the whole incident, the whole crime is a tragedy on both ends of the equation. And we've got to do something about it. And it's the policies, it's the policies, and it is the policies that we've watched for a couple of years in this city, where we have a mayor who says, in the face of looting and burning and rampaging, that in effect, it's okay. When you have a mayor that sends that message, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is gonna happen? We've got a climate for crime, we've gotta end it. Vito said it, I worked with Eric Adams, council and the Senate. He's a good man and he's a good friend. And Vito, I agree. I like what he's saying. I like what he's saying on this issue. And so there is hope. We've got to come together. We've got to fight to take back our schools, our streets, and our community. Thank you, Senator. Uh, and, and Senator, so to put it, Andrew put in this, what, what we're seeing, we can't allow it just to happen in, a, in real time. It's almost like a, a riot is happening in slow motion and that's what we need to do is stop that riot right now and, and I want to reiterate everybody here was here a hundred percent committed to what we're doing Democrats Republicans and it's my privilege to introduce our good friend uh, Assemblyman Michael Cusick. Thank you. Thanks Vito. Uh, thank you uh, Borough President-elect and, and my colleagues in city, state and federal government uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a, a rallying cry. Uh, this is a, a statement that crosses all political lines, all lines that may exist in society for the safety of our children. There is nothing more important to elected officials in our job but to protect our society and to protect our children. And this is why it's important that we stand here no matter what party, what house, what, what branch of government that we represent, that we are here to say that this must stop and that we are working not only together, but as the Congresswoman mentioned, working with law enforcement, working with the, the principals, working with teachers, working as a community to make sure that our children are safe going to school. You should be able to have peace of mind as a parent and as a student that when you walk into a school to learn, to become an adult, to know what the, the to learn history and math and English, that when you walk in that door, you don't have to worry about your physical safety. You don't have to worry about, or even waiting for the bus or being on the bus. And that's why, as Vito said, Susan Wagner is a fantastic school. All our schools on Staten Island are fantastic schools. 
and it's not an indictment on the schools. This is just, we need to now work together, all branches, all aspects of government, whether it's law enforcement, education, or elected officials, to make sure that our children are safe, learn when they go to learn. So thank you again to for our president-elect and to my colleagues. I look forward to working with all of you uh, as we move forward. Thank you very much, Assemblyman. Next up, um, a good man who represents as well in Albany, Assemblyman Charles. Thank you, Borough President-elect, Dr. Sella. Uh, you know, I have my uh, daughter in a public school on Staten Island, and uh, what took place here a few days ago is completely unacceptable. When I send my daughter to school, I send her to school to take care of business, you know, to learn, to be a better student, um, and be prepared for society. And it's very important uh, that we come together and make sure that we prioritize public safety, we make sure that our schools are safer, and we also make an effort to hold those accountable for their actions. Because if we don't hold them accountable, this will continue to happen over and over again. And when I saw the video of a firearm near a public school, that's not okay. We have to do more to address the gun bombs. We gotta get the guns off our streets. There's a lot of illegal firearms on our streets. And the message that I also personally wanna send is if you have an illegal firearm, two things will happen. You will either end up in a casket or in handcuffs. You know, so thank you, Borough President Fasella, for bringing us together um, to you know, address this matter. And I look forward to working with all of you to make our schools safer for our kids. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assemblyman. Uh, next up is, uh, again, another Assemblyman who represents us well in the state legislature and also a former prosecutor, Michael Tanusi. Thank you so much, uh, Borough President Fisella. Uh, I'm not gonna take too much time because a lot of my colleagues have already said the same thing. Uh, basically, we're in a very, very dangerous situation. I saw the video of what occurred here and I have to tell you that the video that I saw is just as bad as the most violent cases I've prosecuted uh, in the Bronx and here in Staten Island as a prosecutor. Uh, and I could not believe that that, was ha that happened in our community here on Staten Island. So I hate to say this, and you know we're here as a bipartisan group, but the policies of this mayor have been disastrous for our community from the top down. And we are here united in a bipartisan fashion, begging and pleading, for Mayor-elect Eric Adams to take charge and to make the necessary changes because it's absolutely inexcusable for our students to not be able to get a quality education in a safe environment. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Assemblyman. And last up is, uh, again, a man who serves as well in the uh, in Assembly, but also a former police officer himself, uh, Assemblyman Mike Riley. Thank you, Borough President-elect Salas. Thank you to my colleagues for standing here. You know, and, and echoing the messages. You know, I don't stand here today as your assemblyman. I stand here as a parent of two high school students here on Staten Island, public high school students. And some of my colleagues mentioned it before. Their heart broke when they saw that. The fear, what they felt inside as a parent. You know. I've been carrying this torch for years, talking about school safety from my time in Community Education Council 31. And it always fell on deaf ears. The key is communication. The lack of communication from the mayor's office, the lack of communication from Tweed. When an incident happens, parents, students, your elected officials, the whole community, are left to guess and to add innuendos because there's not a clear and concise point of contact. That is something that I have raised for over a decade. And yes, I know they can't always put out all the information because it may jeopardize a case, but there's no reason that our principals and our administrators are handcuffed continuously by Tweed because they gotta wait for the lawyers at Tweed to give the okay for their message. Principals know their communities. Their communities are family. Our principals are members of our community. 
Let them speak to their community. And my message to the families, especially the parents, have a conversation with your kids. Communicate with them. As I said, communication is key. That is where we have a breakdown. Just think about the latest incident here. We're worried about getting in on Snapchat or TikTok instead of picking up that phone and dialing 911. That's our shortfall as parents. We need to give that message to them, to our kids, to our neighbors. If you see something, speak up. Enough is enough. It's time to come together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, finally, Frank, you want to say something? Okay, so uh, representing uh, our great councilman, Joe Borelli, Frank, I'm sorry. Joe wanted to be here as well, but couldn't make it. Um, I don't want to be the dead horse here. The message is clear. We're standing united. Uh, and by the way, parents.